going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Brandon's Face. It's the podcast about a playlist. I'm Jonathan Beardsley. And I am Brandon May. We hope you're all having a great week. On uh, last week's episode, we broke down the releases that we missed from December. You should all check that out if you haven't already. On this week's episode, we're going to be breaking down our favorite releases from the first two weeks of January, including new albums from Anti-Flag, Ahab, Circle Waves, Obituary, and Alpha 9. So we've got some, what, punk, some indie, some metal, some trance. Brandon's face is officially back for 2023. (laughs) Feels Um, good to get back in the groove, John. It does. It does, man. It really does. Uh, I'm excited to get into this. You just want to dive right in? Let's do it. All right, man. First up, we have a new track from Skrillex, Pink Pantheress, and Trippy Red called Way Back. What are your thoughts on this one? So I've never really been like a huge fan of Trippy Red, but I will say that it kind of works on this track. Uh, I like Rumble way more than this one, but I'm still I'm still pretty stoked for the album. Um, yeah, I to speak on Rumble, we are going to be introducing a song of the week category that we'll be doing from here on out. Can we just both say Rumble was the song of the week for last week? Yep. Um, I'm, OK, I'm game for that. Lock it in. Lock it in. Um, Yeah, man, I think that this tune, it's very different. It's a neat little like drum and bass tune with some hyper pop mixed in. Pink Panthers anchors the song vocally. Trippy Red doesn't sound bad, but I think he's doing just like the Kid Cudi role on this song. (laughs) And uh, I don't know, it's just not working for me fully, but I don't think he sounds bad. My favorite part of this by far is that last 30 seconds with those little horns worked in, which I'm sure you were loving too. Yep, sure did. Yeah, um, this album is shaping up to be quite something, man. He posted a huge, like, I want to say like eight part Twitter post um, that we'll have to dive into when we cover his new song next week, kind of explaining what was going on in his absence and all of that. I'm excited to dig into that later with you. Nice. Yeah, Uh, let's move on to this next one, which is from Tiesto. This one's called Lay Low. It's from his upcoming album. Is this one less generic than you were expecting, but still very boring? Yes, actually. (laughs) That's Uh, how I I was like, it sounds like it's good, but it's not. (laughs) My my notes say, man, Tiesto's Ghostwriters did a great job on this one. Yeah, uh, the bass is crisp as fuck. I'll give him that. Sounds excellent, but not much else for me is working on this one. Uh, Yeah, I, I still maintain that the last interesting thing he did was Kaleidoscope. I'm going to one up you there. Uh, So Kaleidoscope is the last best thing Tiesto did. However, under his alias Allure, he released an album like a year after Kaleidoscope that was phenomenal. (laughs) Um, I totally forgot he has another alias. He probably has a few. Um, But I was recently listening to T-Pain's podcast. Shout out T-Pain, big fan if you're listening. And he had Dylan Francis on and he had Dylan Francis name his like five top DJs, producers, and there was really no criteria for which this was based on. And uh, one of his picks was Tiesto. And he said he picked Tiesto one because he's obviously a legend in the business, but he he's so good with signing people that are never going to get a shot otherwise and getting them a much bigger platform for their music which I think is awesome. Um, But yeah, the product is a little bit watered down nowadays. I I think that it still has a massive market. And I think that he's very good for the genre in terms of putting people on his label. But man, the like elements of life, Tiesto, the kaleidoscope, (laughs) Tiesto, we feel so far from that right now. Adiago for strings. Oh God, perfect song, perfect song, man. (laughs) Yeah, I, I'm still very interested in how this record is going to sound. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll see what I happens. I think we know how it's going to sound. I'm interested in how it'll come together. Yeah, um, I, I hope it's more of this. Because this, yeah. was, this was pretty good. It wasn't It wasn't amazing. It, like it wasn't said, David it was, Guetta. It was, yeah, it was kind of boring. But other than that, I mean, it was it was it's better than most of the stuff I've heard him play live since, you know. Oh, agree. One hundred percent. Um, all right, let's move on to one of my favorite EDM tracks of the week. This is SG Lewis, Charlotte Day Wilson, and Channel Tress. The song's called Fever Dreamer. And for us to be like seven songs into this rollout and for the quality of every single to still be so high, 
definitely speaks to the level of artist SG Lewis is and to the quality of the album that we're about to receive, man. How excited are you for this album? I pre-ordered it. On vinyl? Yep. I'm considering doing the same. I'm it's, very stoked it's, on it's, this. Uh, I think it's going to be another good one, man. I uh, Time still gets plenty of play around the house, so I'm sure this one yeah. will be no different. I agree. Um, Time's a fantastic record. I went back to that recently, too. Glad he put Channel Tress on both of his full-length albums. Let's hope Let's hope this pairing keeps going going forward, you know? Yeah, yeah. As long as S.G. Lewis has a career, so does Channel Tress. That'd be a sick tour, <laughs> by the way. S.G. Oh, Lewis, yeah. Channel Tress. Good God. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm borderline agoraphobic, and that would get me there. I, I'm <laughs> sure you I would be there. Um... All right, let's move on to this one. You threw on by, is it Brecca? I Sure, let's go with Brecca. So Boris Brecca, this song's called Black Unicorn off of, it looks like a release called Club Vibes Part 5. My only note says epic, but that is fucking underselling it, man. I love <laughs> every sound that is happening in this song. This is what, eight, nine minutes? Something and like it's that. flawless. It is flawless, man. <laughs> this song... It's not my song of the week, but it is damn fucking close. I'm so glad you put this one on because I would have completely missed it. You think he's going to play this at Coachella? A fucking better. <laughs> God, if this one goes off at night with that full production, good lord. I, I, I'm pretty sure I texted you. If Boris doesn't get the sunset at outdoor stage <laughs> booking, I don't, I, I've lost hope and... Of Lost Hope and Golden Blaze. I agreed with you completely, and I assumed it was because you listened to this song, but I didn't want to ruin the conversation <laughs> by talking about it then. So I assume you're loving this one just as much as I am. Oh, yeah. This is my song of the week, man. Uh, this, okay, fuck I've been, yeah. I've been, I've been kind of diving into his stuff over the last year or so uh, and haven't really thrown anything on the podcast because I've really been listening to his live sets. And then I saw him mm -hmm. on the Coachella poster and I was like, Hey, what has he been doing? Realized I don't follow him on Spotify. So I was like, well, I got to click that, but I've been got listening. It. He has two circle sets. He has a number of, he has a number of other, uh, I think he, uh, was it a boiler room? It was something like that um, on YouTube. And I, I listened to them. I, I've listened to them like a number of times over the last, uh, over the last year or so, maybe less than a year. And, uh, yeah, man, this man takes everyone on a journey during his live sets. But this eight minute track <laughs> took me on this a journey. This is a journey in, and of in itself. itself. <laughs> yeah, right. dude. <laughs> right. So I, uh, I, I think, I think this is from the the full EP. I, I, I didn't throw the other. Oh no, I think it's just the two tracks on here. I didn't throw the ten minute track on here, but I did listen to it. and It's also very good. But this was, this is a very, very good track. <laughs> I, I listened to it as well once I realized this wasn't just one song on the release, but I, I get why you didn't throw it on. It's a little more dense, but yeah. very good. This is clearly just one of the best songs of the year to start. It has set the bar in EDM along with Rumble as <laughs> yep. far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm glad man. you liked it so much, man. This is a great Dude, track. Yeah, this one blew me away. I was I was very impressed by this one. Big fan. Awesome. Um, awesome. All right. Let's move on to this next one, which is Rez's first single of the new year. This one's called Gyrate. It's a collaboration with artists named Rekno and Quaxen. It feels like a classic Rez song, just a lot filthier, which I kind of like. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm digging the grime on this one. What about you? Yeah, I uh, I love this, man. The synths that Rez uses are just, they're just so neat, man. She's got this darkness that is just pervasive throughout all of her tracks. And this one really brought out the darkness, I think. Um, I agree. It, it's clear that she's kind of following a formula. There's not like a whole lot of variation in her music, but who fucking cares, man? This is great. I say give it time. Like, I feel like she's kind of, you're right. It is, I don't want to say formulaic because that sounds like a bad adjective, but there is a formula, almost a comforting formula to her music at this point. I, I like that comforting formula. Yeah. Um, big fan of this. We'll see what she does this year. I know she said she's going to be touring a lot less and probably recording a lot more. So I'm sure we're going to get some more tunes from her. Do you think she's just going to start releasing those IDs from, uh, what was it? Res Halloween? What was that called? No, Nightmare no. That, Street? That, that was those it. are, that is the release of them. They're not mixed in any way to where you're hearing them overlap at any point. Like they're right. just seamlessly transitioned. She just said she she just wanted the emphasis to be on the overall project instead of the songs. But I love that's that. a whole damn new album. Man. That's, I love that. It's 
great. Uh, that's why it made our our list at like number seven last yeah, year on the best EDM one. albums. Uh, all right, let's move on to this remix. This is a song by Elohim and Stems Doubt. Man, you're really putting me through it with some of these names. Uh, <laughs> this song is called Running. This is the Mora Alfmarsen remix. Yep. Uh, big fan of the overall vibe of this. Really enjoyed it. What were your thoughts on it? I, I like the original track, and this is a super chill remix of it, and I loved it. Yeah, this one, uh, I don't know, like 4 p.m. at a festival, this would be a nice tune to hear. Yeah, man. Yeah, super agree. While you're like refreshing, you know? Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on to this Cream remix of Alive by K5. It's a really fun, glitchy house take on their song Alive. Big fan of it. Not sure it tops the original, but I did like it. What did yeah. you think of it? I, I also like the original better, but I really do like this remix. I thought it was done really well. It's like it's like a pretty it's a pretty great rework. I would almost call it a rework rather than a remix, but whatever you want to call it. Love the synths. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like they all mean the same thing, but I do get what you mean by that. It felt like he kind of reworked the song from the ground up versus exactly. just rearranging some layers of it. Yep. Uh, next up is one I threw on here at the last second. This is the um, <laughs> side piece remix of a Millie by Lil Wayne. Love this side piece just makes fucking nothing but bangers. So I'm a big fan of this. I'm sure it's destroying their live sets. They they posted the text Wayne approved the remix, which amazing. I don't think there's a remix of a Millie Wayne hasn't approved. <laughs> but props to you guys. Uh, what's your favorite song on the Carter Three? Oh, all right. We're doing that. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw that at you out of nowhere. <laughs> like, are you like a lollipop, a milli guy? Or are you like a deep cuts? No, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up real quick. Yeah, please do. Um, no, no, I want you to, I want you to, I want to actually know what your favorite is. On three, it's Lala. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yep. That's well, one. we know it isn't pussy monster, which if people do not, not know, <laughs> Get you a friend named Brandon who will buy you the original <laughs> version of the CD so you get playing with fire. If you guys are fans of this album and have never heard the original CD version of it, there is a song that is not on streaming because of a sample clearance that somehow made it onto a record that was sold um, that is incredible called Playing With Fire. My favorite is Got Money, Lil Wayne and T-Pain. Love that one. Gets me feeling a certain way every single time, man. Yeah, that, that That's a hype up. That's a hype up song. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I actually, so I went in at 6 a.m. and everybody walks in like zombies at 6 in the morning at work. And uh, somebody handed me the aux cord. And I was like, all right, let's wake everybody up. And I threw this on. And by, by, by like by like the second drop, everybody was everybody was getting it. So how can you not? Right. Honestly. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I think it was last year when the I can't remember what Coachella what tent or what venue it was but they were on it and you sent me like the lineup i don't think you knew who they do lab and you were like kind of weak and i was like yeah side piece is fucking tight though yeah. and now i'm glad you know what i mean by that because if yep. you hear this in the do lab you're gonna lose your fucking mind <laughs> yep absolutely no I, I i feel it man this was uh this is a, this is a great track so pump it up. um just just a little weirdness to throw out in the atmosphere which i'm sure you might have caught some whiffs of zoo is announced for lightning in a bottle correct yep he also posted as a story just the words zoo lab yep is that happening it's got to that's kind of what i texted i don't know if that's gonna get to shut text. down it's that's gotta gonna get, get shut down like why like why would he why would he do you know how many that? people are gonna try and get in there it's well, it's too much. It's going to be the cascade thing. I right, mean, not exactly. to that degree, but no way that's happening. I mean, too. Zoo's pretty big. He's not quite on cascades level, but I remember him posting, "We're going to do a redo set at the at the do lab," and then posting again. Sorry, guys, can't can't do this. Huge Zoo safety is concern. Very big in the EDM community. Like he can main stage. He main stages at EDC now. He's a giant artist on terms of like a massive every genre music festival i don't really know where he lands but if you have him playing in the in the do lab and another dj in the sahara you better hope that's a great dj in the sahara to try and split that crowd for a bit because yeah. it's gonna be rough <laughs> he better be going up against eric prince hollow if that's the yeah case. right like literally <laughs> literally 
Yeah, I, I would saw, be going hollow all the way. I <laughs> uh, for real. Uh, I actually saw Zoo at Coachella in 2016, I believe. Oh God damn it! And that and what? That, that's a hard. Really forgot about that. That Sahara tent was fucking packed. I'm talking. Oh, I couldn't God. get into the tent packed. Mm-hmm. I still saw. I still saw the show from like right at the back, right right at like the back of the tent. But it was it was packed, and fucking Guns and Roses was playing at the same time. You know, like man, what a time when yeah. the Sahara was Eden. I'll tell you. <laughs> um, oh, all right, man. let's let's move out of EDM into some some pop and elsewhere. We have one I threw on here from Pop Can and Drake called We Can Done. Uh, it's it's kind of a fun throwback to the days of the controller demo, but I do not need to hear Drake doing his fake Jamaican accent ever again. <laughs> Pass. No, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry I made you listen to this, but I heard it and I was like, I'm not going to be the only one that did this. <laughs> well, thanks, man. But yeah, this is definitely not my jam. It's an attempt at something. Um, yeah. But this is uh, another <laughs> indication that music in general is just in this transitional period if Drake is doing this. Yeah, not great. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to this one from Spacey Jane and Benny called Lots of Nothing. I'm very curious on your thoughts on this one. Uh, our weekly Benny feature is, as always, great. Um, I actually really liked this song. Did you? Yeah, I, it, yeah yes. It's different. <laughs> it's different yes. hearing her with like a full band in this context to me, even though it's still vaguely indie pop, which I expect from her. Uh, I think this band is also from her same country, so it's I don't, it's not a favor, but it's definitely her working with probably some people she likes. Uh, yeah, man, I think she stole the spotlight for the brief time she's on the song. I she wish did. her verse was a little longer, but it's a decent she tune. Did. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was neat. She has a new song coming out. She didn't say a release date, but it's called Green Honda, and it's coming in the next few weeks, so we can look forward to that. Nice. Do they have Hondas overseas? Um, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're made overseas. <laughs> pretty but. sure that's where they come from. <laughs> uh, all right, man, let's move on. We got a new one from M83, Oceans Niagara. I believe you sent me a text about this one, right? Uh, I might have about said... About them releasing a new album. Yep, new album release. Uh, man, I've actually been waiting for this one. I think their last album was 2019 or something like that, so it's been mm-hmm. a few years, and... A uh, new album comes out on the 17th. Uh, like with all M83 releases, though, we have this synth dream pop track that's just drowning in character. Um, I love this. I have high hopes for the new record. We'll see where it goes. What did you think about it? I don't know how I feel about this one as a single, but it got me a lot curious, a lot more curious about what the album is going to sound like. So I guess it did its job. I, I tend to like their more, more vocal heavy stuff, but I thought the music on this was excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I just thought at some point it was going to like turn into a, like a vocal song and it just never really does that. Nope, but for what didn't. it is, it's an excellent like beginning of this chapter, I think. And we're, we've been seeing a lot of bands do this. I'm not saying this is the intro to their album. It could be in the middle, could be a could be a single. But we're we're noticing a lot more bands rolling out their new albums with like kind of a tease of the atmosphere and the vibe before really getting into the the denser lyrics and the music. Well, I think that kind of opens up a conversation about music in general because singles used to be shit that would go on the radio. Shit does not go on the radio anymore. So, at least in this realm of things, right? I don't know, I don't know where you are. No. I, don't, I don't know about the radio stations where you're at and like it's probably going to hit satellite radio. I'm assuming it'll be on um What's the what's the alternative terrestrial radar? Yes. Yeah, so, so, oh, uh, are you uh, talking about I'll, BPM? No, I'm talking or about no. alternative something or other. I don't know. It'll probably be there. Um, Alt Nation. That's what it is. Uh, Alt Nation. But singles used to be, hey, go buy our album. Now it is, I think, better used. I think singles are now better used to. Here's going to be the vibe, and you should listen to the full project. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, they they also used to be not just here's my single by my album. Here's my single by my single. If you like the single by my album, they <laughs> used to true. sell singles in the stores, kids. Um, <laughs> like, believe it or not, my first piece of music I ever bought was a Master P cassette tape that I did not even know was a single until I finished the one song on it. And I was like, it's a short album. Um, yeah, man. Uh, 
it's a completely different model now and that's why you have guys like russ who they drop albums they don't really need to like that's not really their model they seem to do well financially without it he's also independent so that's kind of different he's getting a lot more of his shares of his royalties um in terms of like the more traditional thing like we saw frank ocean who is very weird to be using as an example for anything like (laughs) as a baseline for the industry but (laughs) his his recent shipment of the blonde vinyl restock came with like a poster that kind of has his thoughts on going away from the singles into more substantial works of music. I think that the singles boom was kind of a thing just, I want to say 2015 to really now, and now the streaming era, really, like they're being used completely differently. And I think that's exactly what you were touching on. Now it's like bands like Royksop, they don't have to wait like, oh, we put a single out, like our our label has to pay to produce a lot more of these physical copies so people can hear it. It's like, let's put a teaser out, then let's put like an intro out, and then let's put the song out because none of this is costing us money in the overhead, you know? Right, right. It's like, these aren't physical things that we're putting out unless we want to do like an accompanying vinyl for each release, which some artists do, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think that we're shifting into a new era. So what we're trying to analyze is quickly becoming not the norm anymore. Yeah, yeah, th- that's uh, that's fair. Yeah, I actually have a few 12 inch singles. I have, um, I just recently learned that it's number one on uh, on Eric Prids's Ma- uh, Ma- Mouseville record label. I have Mouseville oh, okay. number one. Interesting. Yeah, I have older ones. I have like a few like white stripe singles and stuff, but those are just like random record store finds. I don't really have like a ton of single CDs or anything anymore. Do you remember what were they? They were like little, they looked like little Game Boy cartridges. Are you talking like about hit Switch? clips? I am. I'm talking about some <laughs> hit clips, it. my man. <laughs> you want to hear 60 <laughs> seconds of a song on repeat? God hey, man. Damn. Hey, those sold, bro. They did. They, they sold. Did I was on like Twitter, Instagram, or maybe my wife is on TikTok or something, but like we came across like a like a picture somebody had of like a bunch of them that they'd found. And there was this one song that I had never <laughs> heard in there. And so I looked it up and I was like, oh my God, like how did I miss it? I gotta find it. It's like some like 18 year old kid that they were trying to like make a pop star at the time that I don't think anybody knows, but he has a hit clip out there. In- incredible i love that should we start releasing the podcast on hit clips yo (laughs) (laughs) yes yes exclusively on zoom next month (laughs) (laughs) coming soon (laughs) brandon's face.com slash hit clips all right (laughs) oh man all right let's move on man we got a new one from tennis called let's make a mistake tonight my only complaint about their last song was that it wasn't long enough. This one sounds similar, but it's much longer. Therefore, I have no notes. <laughs> there, you, there you go, man. <laughs> Glittery and confident. Those are two things that we come to expect and things that I love about tennis. You said last week that you were going through their discography. Have you mm-hmm. done all of that yet? There's some really great moments. I haven't that. made it back to the beginning, although I believe today is the like 10th or 12th year anniversary of their very, very first album. Um, honestly, man, every time I try to go back further through the discography, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to play swimmer again. (laughs) It's so good, dude. It's so good. It is very good. Phenomenal fucking album. And I can't believe it took me like two and a half years to find it. But in terms of this shit, man, we're what two songs into this rollout. And this is already shaping up to be a classic if the rest of the album is as good as the singles have been uh yours yours conditionally is is a very good record has one of my favorite tennis songs on it okay that's the one from 27 i think i started that one i have made it to that one um i think i i think i might have made it to ritual and repeat i have not made it to young and old and cape door yet though well, uh, there's some there's some gems in there, man, and uh, I'm, I'm exci- learning, man. I'm, I'm, excited. I'm learning. I'm excited to hear the rest <laughs> of the rest of this record. So we'll see what happens. Yes, thank you for showing me them. Big of fan. course. Um, all right, man. Next up, we got a new one from Sam Smith, Coffee, and Jesse Reyes called "Give Me." I'm gonna say it for you, Brandon. This song is fucking annoying, <laughs> but I added it since we hadn't heard from him in a while and he has an album coming out soon. His his voice still has this like incredible natural warmth to it that cannot be taught or replicated. 
I'm usually able to enjoy that about his music, despite whatever specific style of pop or R&B he's doing. But whatever diet Rihanna shit Jesse Reyes is doing on the hook of this song, like, needs to be fucking stopped. I hate it. Dude, I fucking, it drives me crazy. I made it through two listens of this song, and we're going to break down the album when it drops in a few weeks. I'm going to skip this song. (laughs) Automatic skip. Yeah, uh, this is not my favorite Sam Smith track, my man. No, he, he cannot <laughs> save this one. And he sounds fine on it, honestly. No, he it's does. A... He's like, he sounds fine, but. Oh, God, yeah. Bad one. I'm glad you felt the same way about it, even if I said the words for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We got a new one from Miley Cyrus called Flowers. What are your thoughts on the new Miley Cyrus single and her upcoming album? Okay, this track is fantastic. Uh, she has such a great voice and she kind of, she shows it off in a, on a number of moments here. Uh, I'm actually really excited for the album now. I think this is a dix to, or a diss to her like ex-husband. I don't know. He is a Hemsworth, is. right? Yes. Um, yes. I don't really follow who's dating who anymore, but, um, so There's like eight Hemsworth. <laughs> my, right. Exactly. Uh, so my, my notes here say, and I'm going to extrapolate on it, but my notes say after the first couple of listens, does this melody remind you of anything or is this just genuinely in, uh, like an infectious earworm? So I Googled it, D- Melody Miley Cyrus Flowers, and I found that uh, I found that um, uh, nothing. I she found borrowed? nothing. And then I came home on lunch one day and my wife was like, hey, did you know that this song is a mirror of Bruno Mars's track? Uh, if I was your man or when I was your man or something mm. like that. And apparently it's, it's, it's a mirror. I'll, I'll try to find the video to throw it in the show notes. But I, I, I thought it was like, wow, it's not the melody, but there was something familiar about it. She didn't borrow it. I, I really, really enjoyed this song. Did you like this as much as I did? Cause I, I've been bumping not this as one much as you know, I thought it was fine. I think that all of her music's fine. I think that her music just lacks like a unique identity. I think it's all good. I think she's a a pretty damn good singer. I just think she switches genres and visual aesthetics so much from album to album that I don't know like what to expect and not in the good way. But I don't know. I think that this one's good. I don't know if if this is the best song that the album has to offer. I don't really know where my expectations for it are, but I'm curious. I think we'll at least get one more single before the album, though. So we should have a more complete picture of it. But like her previous albums are so hard to read from single to single. That one that she did with, uh, what was it? Uh, we can't stop was also the one that had wrecking ball on it. And I can't, I hate, we can't stop. And I love wrecking ball. So (laughs) I'm not going to judge this one based on any single. I'm, I'm hoping I like most of the album when it drops. This one was fine though. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm glad you really liked it though. I thought you would. I was like, man, this one's got a, it's got a catchy tune to it. Yep. It sure does. Speaking of one that does not have a catchy tune to it, we got a new one from Queen Nyjah. Let's talk about it. We don't really need to talk about it, Brandon. It's a decent song. It's just a little too textbook and formulaic. I do like her, though, so I wanted to put her on the playlist. Any thoughts on this one? My notes say this is fine. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> it. it. It's fine. Um, not her best song, uh, but we'll definitely keep keep an eye out for her. We got a new one from Vido, that is V-E-D-O, never heard of this artist before now, and Chris Brown called Do You Mind. I know it's nothing new, I know it's another Chris Brown feature that you probably didn't want to hear, but I thought that this track had a really nice bounce to it when I previewed it, so figured I'd throw it on. Uh, Vito actually ended up releasing like a full album after this. I almost put you through that, but I chose not to. (laughs) Did, Did you enjoy anything about this song? Was it at least catchy? Yeah, it's catchy. It's fine. It's not. It's not. It's not my favorite thing, but it's it's fine. Okay. I I'll take that as a win. Um, all go. right, man. There's a ton of bad R and B this week. We got a new one from <laughs> Party Next Door called "Her Old Friends," an absolute dud for me. He remains the most wildly inconsistent artist in R and B today, and probably one of like the biggest flops considering the heights that he was sort of making it to. Don't enjoy this. Haven't enjoyed anything of his in like five to six years. <laughs> Did you enjoy anything about this? Is is the party next door experience still working for you at all? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this one, man. The lyrics are super weird. The beat is like fine. How familiar but... are you with his old stuff? 
Not very. Maybe. I don't know. Has he been on the you radio? Probably know, pro- you probably, probably know. You probably know Come and See Me featuring Drake. That was like a big, big, big one. Um, his first album that came out in 2013, it was a self-titled one. That's like the R&B heads one. There's some really good songs on there. But after that, he just went way too OVO and way too just high on his own <laughs> supply. But he's made a few songs. He got Rihanna to do like the hook on a song in 2020. So he still has some some name power, I guess. But man, in my personal opinion, dude has not released a good song in like six years. Yeah, man, his cadence is weird. I feel like I've heard a variation of this track like a thousand times before. Like oh, it, you probably just, have, you know, and they've like probably just, all been from him. Well, <laughs> maybe like it, it, it didn't, it didn't, didn't do it for me, my man. All right, can we please move on because I'm very excited to talk about this next one. Let's talk about it. This is my song of the week. This there is, it is. Come, I think it's Camilla. Um, through the week, I have not been listening to her recently, but this is fucking phenomenal. I believe. I started listening to her like 2016, 2017. Her first two projects were great. There's one called Until I Wake that I fucking love. Um, Yeah, man. If you never have heard her, I I definitely recommend checking out Before I Wake from 2017. It's a lot of these vibes. She's just an incredible fucking rapper. She released like four or five albums in the last two years. So maybe we should catch up at a certain point. What did you think of this? I really liked this. You better. Yeah, you better. I thought it was really good, man. I thought it was yeah. really good. Fucking hustle. What was, I was uh, not... you said before I wake? Yeah, before I wake. It'll be in her albums, yep. probably near the beginning. Um, that one's excellent. She she definitely does not get near the amount of streams or credit that she should for her talent. Um, oh, yeah, this, this was awesome, man. Dude, I'm glad you like it. I, I wasn't even following her. I was just going through New Music Friday on what was a pretty slow week. And I was like, man, haven't seen that name in a while and heard it. And I was like, God damn. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. I think it. I think uh, it's honestly a really good length for this style of track, too. I think under three minutes. I think it, I think it was just perfect. I did. I, I, I played this. I played this track like seven or eight times. I had a few just like mornings this week where I did not want to be up and going to work. And every time this came on on my drive to work, I was like, back at it. (laughs) Let's go. Oh, man, I love songs that make me feel like that. Um, All right, let's move on. We got a new one from Russ called Put You On Game. This one doing anything for you? Yeah, man. Russ is out here speaking truth. Stop I knew you would. Weed. I knew you were gonna like the messages in this song. <laughs> loved it, man. I loved it. I thought it was great, man. I mean, yes, things sound as simple as stop spending on this, buy plane tickets, <laughs> but it's not that simple, right? No, um, no, it isn't. But uh, there, there is some, there is some wisdom in there. I agree, man. I think the lyrical substance of this song saved it from being just kind of a predictable flow in terms of what to expect from a Russ song. Um, all right, man, we got a new one from Black Thought and L. Michael's Affair called Grateful. Uh, I think it goes without saying that Black Thought is great, as always, on this. Yes. The beat is fine on its own, but it sounds like he's having to slow himself down more than he's wanting to to, like, match the tempo on this one. It's a little weird, but I'm still very excited for this new album of theirs. I imagine you're pretty stoked on it. Yeah, I I liked it, but I agree with you. I think he was trying to slow himself down a little bit. Um, The album is going to be called Glorious Game. It's releasing uh, the first day of Coachella, actually, uh, April 16th. Um, L. Michaels, Michelle, I don't know how you pronounce that, uh, Affair is playing Coachella. So does this kind of make like a does this make a black thought like a lock in for uh, for a guest appearance? Uh, I would hope so. Yeah, I would think so. I'm not familiar with their music, so I don't know what else. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what to expect. Maybe I should be. Sounds like you have some homework to do for Coachella this year, my friend. Maybe. <laughs> hey, you always love discovering new artists. This is this is your chance, man. Uh, yeah, I made a spreadsheet the day the lineup dropped. I'm a. Big it's a fan little of different that. though when uh, when you're going and you have the option to see everybody versus like let me do all this research and then it's like oh they're not streaming their set I'm not going to even right. see it. <laughs> but let's hope they get some some spotlight. Uh, all right, man, we got good lord we got one from armani and denzel curry called goaded this is the first certified banger in the hip-hop category <laughs> this year good lord have you ever heard armani white before no never heard of armani white 
dude i stumbled upon this dude when he released his first song which i think was called like nyc window like years ago and like i remember just like thinking he was an incredible rapper like his first three or four singles i was like this dude is as good as most people that you hear like way higher up in the industry than him i'm glad that he's finally like gotten his name out there i was surprised i had to like double check and i was like this is the same dude and i went through his singles i was like first single <laughs> nyc window holy shit dude this is a fucking banger walk on the track like i'm walking to poland denzel curry <laughs> how do you not love this guy dude this is incredible yeah i know th th this is great man this was this was uh this was a lot of fun I don't think we have an album announcement yet, but I imagine we're going to get one soon. Well, I peeped his Spotify profile, and it looks like uh, he put one out in uh, the last album he 2019? put out was in 2019. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, good for he's him. Due. He's due. Uh, maybe, maybe I've just been living under a hip hop rock, man, because he's got 10 million monthly listeners. I'm not. It's not a them. lot in hip hop, though, man. It's I mean, not I, a lot I mean, in hip hop. I guess, man, that would be a lot for for me. Imagine if we were getting 10 million downloads on our podcast every month. Everyone, <laughs> if we do not have 10 million downloads by the end of this month, the Brandon Space Podcast is over. You heard it here. No, no, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> it could be the last of us, and we're going to be podcasting from the quarantine zone, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, man. Did you guys hear that new acoustic guy outside of the bar last night? <laughs> um, that'd be awesome, actually. Uh, all right, let's move on. We got a new one from Paranol. Uh, this one's called We Shine at Night. Uh, new Paranol sounds a lot like old Paranol, but what's not to like about that? <laughs> Again, I have no idea what they're saying, but I know that I fucking love it, uh, as I have loved most of Paranol's music since we discovered them. I have to say, I... I I, I don't know if anybody's ever translated their music, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to know what they what they're saying. Seems I'm like they've sure got a message, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They make music at a rapid pace and it's very dense and complex for the amount like for the speed at which they make it. I'm right. eternally impressed. I really love how distorted this one gets near the end. It's a yeah, fun man. one. I, I think it's safe to say we'll get a new album from him, them. They uh they released what? An album, two albums, three albums in 2021. <laughs> I think we'll get a new album. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's move on to this new one from Periphery called Wildfire. This one <laughs> fucking rips, man. It is, it's structured like a Christopher Nolan movie, but <laughs> there's almost nothing in it that doesn't work for me, man. There's a, there's a fucking two minute jazz bridge in this song and it's fucking <laughs> awesome. Uh, I saw you threw that their their new album on our on our release calendar, yep. which is incredibly called Periphery Five. Gent is not a genre. <laughs> <laughs> Love that title. How are you feeling about this one? Okay, hell yeah! Uh, this is just a <laughs> fucking party, man. Uh, it is. This is just a lot of fun to listen to, man. The dichotomy of the clean vocals coming in without like a formula in the verses—they just kind of come in, and and then the like an the actual jazz break, which comes in so fucking smoothly that you barely have any idea how it happened. And yeah. I, I'd like to say that I've been listening to some metal with a uh, saxophone recently. But this is not just metal with saxophone, which does work and is really cool. This is like a legitimate jazz break in the middle of a metalcore song. It is really incredible. The string yeah, section at the end, crazy. man, full Vince McMahon meme. Uh, Gent is not a genre. It comes out on March 10th, and I think it'll be a good one. Correct me if I'm wrong or if you don't know. Wasn't this vocalist the one that took over... Not the not the immediate singer after Sonny and from first to last, but when they redid Note to Self a few years ago, wasn't this the dude that was doing the vocals? Huh, maybe. Now that you say it. I think it, it I was. It, so, it, it sounds familiar. It's very possible. That's actually a really good remake of that song, too. I, I, everyone was expecting it to be sacrilege, and everyone was like, God damn, this is really fucking good. Yeah, man, that, that, re that remake is very good. I don't want to speak out of line. I'll do some homework after this, but I'm 99% sure that the singer of Periphery was the one doing that. Well, there we go. 
All right, I'm man. I'm really glad that you liked that track, man. Dude, because... I fucking loved it, man. That that one's going to be very fun to fun to break down. When is that again? That is uh, March, March 10th. 10th. This was this is a very close runner up to my song of the week. Oh, yeah. No, this one's a <laughs> this one's a Brandon masterpiece if I've ever heard it. I right. I appreciated it quite a bit. Uh, next up, we have See You Next Tuesday. Their new song, Why Can't You Behave? Mother of God. <laughs> this song is is so fucking heavy. Uh, I love it. I'm just happy Cunt is making music again, you know? Thank you. Okay. So I can't believe we're getting new See You Next Tuesday music, man. I remember when they, rever- when they released their first demo back in the MySpace days. And I remember being like, oh, that's so edgy. See You Next Tuesday. I get it, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they released Parasite. And I was like, oh, this is a real fucking fucking band yep. um and i've just i've been a fan ever since they've released a little bit here and there but god damn this song rips man man you just say in parasite just makes me think of like turning the pages in an ap magazine and see like, <laughs> <the advertisement. laughs> yes. oh, man. yeah dude i i was like I was like, have they just been around? And I went to their page. I was like, nope, nope. they've been gone for a very long time. <laughs> yes, so sir. This is awesome. <laughs> I think this is actually the second newer song they've released, too. Yes, it is. Um, I, I realized because somebody somebody had posted on Reddit uh, a new single from See You Next Tuesday. And I was like, no. And so I clicked on it and I was like, oh, shit. This is a new See You Next Tuesday song. So I went to their Spotify and I was like, of course, I'm not following them. I thought they broke up because it's been... Uh, yeah like uh, 13 fucking years or something like that and so i was like well click and follow cover in this next week let's hope i surprise john yeah man uh it's funny like i follow some legendary bands that i know or like artists that have passed away that i know aren't necessarily releasing new music but then there's like why would I follow Self Against City in 2023? Like, <laughs> but then you you stop and this shit happens. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> that happened to me with The Higher last year. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I have to follow all these bands. It was so funny because I was so confident when somebody posted new See you next Tuesday. And I was like, no. <laughs> like, 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 there's just no way, man. Couldn't be. Dude. He retired. You know? New dead to fall. New see you next Tuesday. Like, life is fucking weird in 2023. I'll tell you that. Now, it, I, it, now all we need is Tom to stop being an Instagram photographer and start a new social media site. Speaking of, I heard edging at a weed shop the other day playing on the... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the and I was like, God, you guys don't have Enema on vinyl back there or what? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, man, let's move on to this new one from Paramore, Se Com Sa. Uh, they have released three singles. They've all sounded completely different and they all somehow sound like Paramore. Like, I don't yep. I don't fucking get it. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not expecting an art rock track from them at all. But sure, why not? Uh I wish there was more singing on this one, but I love the lyrics, man. You can add I Run on Spite and Sweet Revenge to the rafters with the rest so of the Hall good. of Fame Paramore lyrics. So good, man. Yeah, <laughs> Haley sounds great on this one. You're right. I wasn't expecting something quite like this. It's so funny because whenever any anytime Paramore comes up on the internet, you hear Paramore's changed. And it's like, bro, they changed immediately after Misery Business. So mm-hmm. I don't know what oh, to yeah. tell you, man. This is no. great music, though. And I'm, I'm getting really excited for the album because you're right. They've released three completely different songs. So let's have it. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I'm fucking ready. I just wish this one was maybe a little longer, but I, yes. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, next up, we got a new one from Andrew McMahon in the wilderness called Lying on the Hood of Your Car. Is this your new favorite song? Bro, how is it that everything this man puts out is good, is this good? Like, his storytelling, the imagery, the execution of his music is just fucking top tier. And the craziest part is that it's been like this for decades. Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah. uh, I was actually just listening to their, I think it was the 2017 album zombies on Broadway. Um, and in, uh, on their track, uh, Brooklyn, you're killing me. He talks about, uh, clearly he's talking about his, uh, something corporate days where him and his friends were fucking playing guitar in his mom's basement. And like, yeah, man, you made some fucking bangers back then too. Like, yep. 
Yep. Like he knows nothing else. It, it, it's really crazy, man. I mean, I, I saw Jack's mannequin back when they were still a thing. I saw Andrew McMahon, I, I think, in like 2015 or something like that. I think it was one of the first – on like their first album, maybe 2014, um, which was really cool. And God, man, it, it's just – I, I, I can't stress how good like this is just genuinely good music. I hope you feel the same way. I'm sure you do because oh, there's yeah. no way you don't, you know? Like Yeah, no, he I've I've said everything I almost have to say about him on the last few singles, man. The guy just knows how to write a great song. Like that's all he does. Very much love this and very much looking forward to the new album, which has finally been announced. Tilt yes. at the Wind No More drops March thirty first. It's gonna be a very fun one. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, let's move on to this new Pierce the Veil song, Even When I'm Not With You. So I know that this is very stupid to do after the fact, but I was like, huh, haven't heard a Pierce the Veil single in a while. Bet they're going to do one unannounced. And they fucking <laughs> did it the week of. And I know you could say it's bullshit. You're making it up. But I swear to God, I had the thought the day that it happened. I was I, like, it's I, coming. I, I, I believe you. Uh, <laughs> the people listening might not, but I, I believe you. Uh, this one's a bit different, bro. Yeah. So it's a bit sappy, but I, I really like it when they lean into this stuff. I think Vic's voice goes very well with this type of song. Obviously, I'm not hoping the whole album sounds like this. But I thought it was I thought it was fine and I thought it was a good way for them to adapt and appeal to maybe a slightly different demographic, if not an entirely different one. But uh, Fantano had this on his worst songs of the week. I thought that was a bit <laughs> harsh, man. Uh, I don't know. I love it. I'm, I'm very excited for the new album. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, honestly, man, my thoughts are that this is going to be a very interesting album. Uh, yeah. And they're clearly not trying to crowd please at this point. And I'm super okay with that. I like this one. It's not my favorite of the singles, and I doubt it'll be my favorite on the album. But I like that they're fucking with us a little bit. Like, they, Same. They, they, you know, like they, they, they're, they're. I mean, they're, they're not releasing King for a day again, and that's okay. You know, like they're also one of the biggest fucking selling bands in terms of merch for Hot Topic. And when they release songs with romantic lyrics like this, it sells fucking shirts. <laughs> I don't know. Like, even when I'm not with you, I want you to be my emergency contact. Like, all of these are lyrics that they've written, yes, but they are genius marketing things as well. Yeah, I that I'll, I'll give you that one. It's going to sell. Remember? Do you remember getting that text from me, like, later that day? I was like, I fucking told you. Yeah. <laughs> this is like there's an emergency contact shirt on Spotify within, like, two weeks of that song coming out. Oh, man. It resonates, though. My wife and I really like the Emergency Contact one. It's a good song. Yeah, it's a great song. Um, all right, man. Let's move on. I think that's February 10th as well. That and the Paramore album drop. That date is just ringing in my fucking head right now. Tennis also drops that day. So does Kalila. Dear let's God. go. And then we're going to sprinkle some in flames on that week <laughs> just because... <laughs> All right, man. Uh, we got these two you threw on here. This is from a group called Slow Fiction. The song's called In the Distance and Top Ten Movie Scenes. I love that song title. This isn't something I typically listen to, but both of these tracks are pretty solid. Talk to me about these. Uh, I found these band, uh, this band last year, and I think we're kind of like in the midst of their... And I think we've currently just stumbled upon like a debut album rollout. I think it might be an EP. Um, but I really love their sound. Uh, so I threw them on the playlist. I'm curious to know what you thought, but you just told me you liked it. So that's cool. Uh, it reminds me of like early 2000s, like indie, you know, yeah. where it was, it's like really carefree, but it like clearly is done well, you know, very mm -hmm. small band. I think they're under 2000 monthly listeners. Yeah. 1206. So figure, figured I'd throw them on and show them some love. I, uh, I like their music, so we'll see what the EP sounds like. For sure. Shout out slow fiction. Let's go. Um, all right, we got another one from Oltar. This one's called Cicadas? Cicadas? I have no idea. Uh, I'm just S not a... Sure, we'll know. go with that. <laughs> I, you, you know I'm just not a big fan of this specific <laughs> style of metal, but I am very curious to see how it will play out over two albums. Did this one do it for you? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> that's all that really matters when, when you add these. I want to make sure these are going to be ones that you hate and I'm trying to figure out. 
No, no, I, 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 I enjoy. I really do enjoy this. Um, I, I've, I've, I've actually, I actually just discovered a, an, another black metal band yesterday that I've been really digging. So of course I'll, you did. I'll, 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 I'll send them over to you. It's, it's really crazy how much extreme metal I listen to. Oh uh, man, I don't subject you to all of it, but I subject you to some of the best ones. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that Veto album next week. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I'm just joking, don't don't I, threaten I don't me with a them. good time, man. If we're gonna go toe to toe with not. extreme metal and R and B, I skimmed it. It is not a good time. I'll tell you that. Uh, no, man, I, I didn't hate this. It's just not my style of metal. But I think they're an interesting artist. Is it one dude or is it a group? I'm sure, I have no idea. Well, I'd like. I always assume these are groups, you know. But then, like, there was a few that we did last year group. where it's like one dude created this. Like, what the fuck? In fact, we we had two albums that we reviewed last year, both Cosmic, Cosmic? Cosmic Putrefaction yeah. and Pharmacist. Both one guy. Both insane that one guy made <laughs> both each of those albums. Insane music too. Those albums yeah. were wild, <laughs> man. They were. Um, all right, next up we got Trivium, Implore the Darkened Sky. This one surprised me. It fucking rips. You enjoying this one? Yeah, uh, this one is pretty good, man. It's not the best uh, I've heard Trivium, and you can kind of start to hear. You can kind of start <laughs> to hear the wear on Matt's vocals at this point. Um, and since we reviewed I, a Megadeth album last year, Brandon, <laughs> I've heard the wear on vocals, and, and and the year before an At the Gates album. Uh, oh god, and, yeah. that and, album and, rips though. Yeah, that that is very true. Um, and since I didn't like Trivium's last album, though, it's almost a guarantee that I'll like this one since they're on kind of the same schedule as Jack White for me. So we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens. One for me, one for them. There it um, is. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, before we get into the albums, Viagra Boys released the deluxe tracks to Cave World. Any of these do it for you? Uh, the, yeah, I, I figured I'd throw on the new tracks. I, I get why these didn't make the album. Um, they're not bad tracks, but they're not just, they're just not really congruent with the rest of the theme of the album, at least totally. Um, so I understand it, but. Did I, these make you revisit the album? Yes. I really love that album so I a, much. I had a feeling it would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think it ain't so enough much. was my favorite of the bunch, but they're all pretty solid. I don't know. Yeah. It ain't enough is pretty good. All right, buddy. You ready to move on to the albums? Let's hit the albums up, my man. We got a couple of okay. ones. We do. We do. And the first one is actually a pretty good one. The first one we're going to talk about is Anti-Flag's album, Lies They Tell Our Children. I don't have a ton to say about this album other than I think it's pretty damn good. Like, I thought most of the collaborations delivered. Shane and Jesse both sounded phenomenal. But I was really impressed with the non-collaborative tracks as well, particularly The Hazardous. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, the only song that didn't really work for me personally was Victory or Death, but that's just personal taste. The rest of the album I thought flowed together pretty nicely. I have this one in like the six to seven range. My standout is Laugh, Cry, Smile, Die, obviously, but Imperialism <laughs> and The Hazardous were great too. How are you feeling about this one? Look, man, I really love the collaborative punk project bringing in people from I would love the idea of a collaborative punk project kind of bringing in people from within the Same. genre and even some like adjacent subgenres to kind of create a project like this but I feel like the concept I feel like I like the concept more than I like the execution here the music is good it, it just didn't grab me the way I wanted it to I guess maybe it's the mixing it sounds really clean you know punk maybe needs a little bit more feedback <laughs> and rawness to it other than that I think it's I think this album's like a really good time uh i listened to it a few times and while i like it for what it is it kind of just left me wanting old anti-flag um but i love uh i love laugh i laugh cry cry smile die love love that song um i really actually like the tim McElrath feature as well um but my standout is the hazardous and i have this anywhere hey between, <laughs> I, have, I have this anywhere between uh, six or seven uh it's just like you i really i really did like it but it just left me craving let's go scream obscenities at the government anti-flag yep. you know hey hey have you seen anti-flag live uh no i have not i had the chance to and i was really tired and i was like i gotta go home that's the least punk rock thing you've ever said. I know, I know. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that, but I'm not going to lie. You know? No, no, I appreciate you telling the truth. I would have done the same. I was uh, really I did tired, catch man. <laughs> I caught them at Warp Tour Marysville. I want to say 
like I don't somewhere in 2004 to 2006 that range maybe um but yeah they, they were really good great band live I'm sure they are man they they, they put out some really good music and I've uh, man. I've been a fan of theirs for a long time so that was that sweet spot at Coachella where it was like the emo wave was hitting, but it was like perfectly balanced with 50% of like the old school culture. Like it was still always no effects, MXPX. Um, yep. What's what's the ska one that everybody loves? Uh, like Real Less Blade, Than Jake. Less, less, less Than Jake. Jake. I was like, yeah, I, don't man. Real, I don't think Real Play Fish has ever played, but it's Less no, Than Jake. No, no. That's that's too scoff for Warp Tour. <laughs> I saw I saw Less Than Jake open for Flogging Molly, and let me tell you how fantastic of a show that was. Dude, Less Than Jake are fucking awesome. They have like a pretty big cult following because they've been awesome for as long <laughs> as they have. <laughs> that, that, that honestly, I I and that show was insane. Uh, my boy Irving, shout out to Irving, has a fantastic video of that show where I made him get into the Circle Pit, and of course he, he drops his phone and the phone camera he's, he's taking a video and he drops his phone and all you see on the camera it, it luckily the camera lands face up so we see just see the circle bit circling the phone and then irving coming back around and grabbing his phone man that's that, awesome that, that was a, it was a fun time that's fucking awesome did he do a full circle before he grabbed it oh yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i i i was oh like i was God. like we're, we're going in this pit bro man like Man, I I hope I hope this new generation learns pit etiquette. I don't care if they're doing it at EDM or rap shows. You have to know pit etiquette, man. Like that, I have been in some insanely fun circle pits that are on the brink of being dangerous. But if you have the band controlling it and conducting it and keeping it in line, I think the casualties were always very good at this. Um, yes. Maybe not. They did cause a riot in Mexico once. I, so maybe I, not the best at it. But. I mean, I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe the riot needed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Dude, you just remind me. Have you? There's a whole Ocean's Twelve subplot where they go to Mexico to rig the dice at a dice factory, and it's like my favorite subplot in a movie. I've ever. never seen Ocean's Twelve because oh I saw god. Ocean's Eleven, and I was like, I'm good. No, what? Yeah. Oh my god. That's a, uh, that's another day, buddy. I, I'm I'm a smoke and aces kind of guy. But speaking of punk bands uh, causing riots, one of my favorite stories is the Exploited. Uh, they were about to go uh, play in Montreal, Canada, and for some mysterious reason, their visas got denied at the last minute, and so they couldn't play the show. Well, the resulting riot is caught on film, and it is hysterical. They are turning over cop cars that like they were like, we're going to see the exploited. And if we're not, we're going to listen to the exploited while we fuck the city up. And I thought that that was one of the most punk rock things I've ever heard of. We need to make a top five punk riots of all time article for the first article on our website. Bro. There it is. I like that. I like that a lot, man. <laughs> That'd be a fun one to research, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Also, I didn't hear anything you said after I'm a smoke maces guy. You're going to pick a movie where fucking Jeremy Piven is a magician over goddamn Brad Pitt and George it. Clooney. I knew, I knew it. We'll save this one for the movie podcast, my boy. <laughs> please, please. I'm looking forward to it. All right, man, let's move on. We got a new one from Ahab, The Coral Tomb. Tell me how you're feeling about it. Okay, so I was expecting more music, kind of like the boats of the Glen Carrig that you and I uh, reviewed. I think it was 2021. Maybe it was last mm -hmm. year. I don't know. Um, I think it was and, last year. And that's not really what we got here on their sixth, uh, sixth studio album. And that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, they came out of the gate strong with this like death doom adjacent intro on the track Professor uh, Aranax's Descent into the Vast Oceans, which I fucking <laughs> love that song title, man. Uh, and it kind of sets the stage for what we're going to get, uh, what we're going to be hearing for the rest of the album. Doomy riffs and vocals coupled with long form cleans in both the vocals and the guitars. Uh, coming in at just a tad over eight minutes, this is actually the second shortest track on the album. <laughs> Uh, Colossus, uh, Colossus of the Liquid Graves comes in and is just crushing. The lyrics about colossal squids and the imagery here are just fantastic, but the delivery on this track is really what sells it. 
there is a skip on this record, and it's uh, Mobilis and Mobili for me. I, I it's it's not that it's bad. It just kind of drags, in my opinion. Maybe it, maybe it's more suited. I don't know towards the end, but maybe even not. It would probably I don't know. I think it, I think they should have cut that one. Um, drag dra- it drags more in eight minutes than others do in twelve, in my opinion. Uh, but okay. the sea as a desert is just a straight up beautiful song, man. Uh, what is it? A Agri Somnia. I, I'm having so so much trouble pronouncing these. Uh, has the, has the riffs. Love man. seeing you go through it. Uh, <laughs> that section at like the five minute mark where the riffs just kind of beat on you while his clean vocals come in with like the melodic guitar is fucking neat. Uh, and the closing track, uh, the Maelstrom, closes out this album in a haunting way with heaviness. Yeah. There's melodies. There's emotional lyrics. And doom metal specifically, I think this album is going to be hard to beat this year for specifically the style of metal. Um, I gave this one an eight, man. I really enjoyed this one. I listened to it a number of times this week. Agri Somnia. I, I, I agree. Somnia is my standout. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, man. What did so, you think about this Ahab record? It's a little different from the last one that you listened to. Well, <laughs> I really like the music. It's heavy. I th- I think the doom part of the doom metal comes through quite a bit on this album. <laughs> uh, I, I like the screams, the those low gutturals, like the guttural low growls are fucking excellent. But I'm not a big fan of the singing on this album or like the style of singing, I should say. The tone it doesn't really bug me. Um, okay. It's so almost yeah, operatic. Pers- yeah, it, that's that's exactly the word. It's operatic vocals, which I like in like a like a nothing but thieves type of way or like a queen way. But in doom metal, I don't know if that's particularly my thing. I still have this one kind of in like the four to five range, just based on how much I love the music on it. My standout is Colossus. That song fucking rules. It's a, it's a great song, man. The very it's a heavy great one. song. Yeah, yeah, I, I I dig that, man. I think you're more of a more of a heavier heavier style doom metal. This is so I've been learning about doom metal. I'm I'm a doom metal noob, and uh, this is funeral doom metal, which apparently is. Uh, different than regular doom metal i don't know uh, i think we but... reviewed a band that called themselves like espionage doom metal <laughs> Dude, we... i don't know I'm, I'm, I'm learning about it man i, I think i think it's a, i think it's a fun genre that i'm just trying to j- kind of jumping into and it's and it's funny i never really got into it after being into metal for 20 fucking years so well you and i kind of met and bonded over edm and over time realized we were both grown like grew up listening to a lot of the same scene stuff and bonded over that. It's fun to get into a new genre or explore an entirely right. new genre with you at the same time. I remember when you showed me your colors vinyl, I was like, you listen to between the buried and me. Like, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I sorry. Do. I'm sorry. What? Like <laughs> I definitely do. God damn. Uh, what is it? Foam born a and B God. That Jesus. album is incredible. Uh, all right, man, let's move on to the circle waves album. Never going under. Uh, I thought this was a a fun album, man. The songs are well-written. It's produced well. It mostly feels like a feel-good indie rock album with the occasional, like, surf rock influence. Its energy can be really infectious. It's probably not going to be in my albums of the year. It's a little too poppy for my personal taste, but I think it's a solid release that I could see myself throwing on when I'm in the mood to listen to something, like, group love adjacent. Um, I have this one kind of between a five and six. My standout is, do you want to talk? How are you feeling about this? You you kind of introduced me to them. I uh, have really loved this band since I think like 2017 when they released uh, Different Creatures is I think the album title. Um, and they really took kind of a poppier approach on this album. And I think, I think we have a little bit of a gem on our hands here. Uh, I struggled to figure out why this band isn't more popular than they are. Uh, I see basically no buzz about them. I see them on very few lineups and that kind of like bums me out a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I really hope that people are listening to them. The album starts out with a banger in the title track, Never Going Under. Uh, They really do a fantastic job of kind of blending pop and rock here. Uh, Your Ghost is so much fun. I love the lyrics on that on that song. Uh, The strings on Northern Town on the outro are gorgeous. 
the bass line paired with Maybe the piano that. on Want It All Today is something that I didn't know I was craving, but man, it kind of scratched an itch <laughs> for me. Uh, this whole album did. Uh, my only complaint is that it's actually a little bit too short. Um, as a whole, coming in in just under 35 minutes, the closing track, mm-hmm. Living in the Gray, uh, we covered when they released it as a single, but I think it takes on new life with context of the whole album, and with it being so short, it actually is very easy to get from Never Going Under to Living in the Gray in one sitting. Um, I, I think the whole record is great, man, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it, as I have with most of their work. It's a little poppier. Like you said, it's a little poppy, um, and it's actually a little poppier than most of their other work, but I will be uh, probably revisiting this one throughout the year, man. I, I, I really like this one. I gave it a seven. Uh, Northern Town or Never Going Under are my standouts. I couldn't decide between those two. Fuck yeah. Excellent album artwork as well. Yes, like this one. Um, all right, man. Let's move on to this new one from Obituary called Dying of Everything. I knew you got really excited when this one was announced. So tell me, did it live up to your expectations? Uh yeah. Yeah. This is an obituary album, man. This is old <laughs> school death metal. Uh they've never been the band to push boundaries, uh, except like maybe in the eighties when they started. Uh, but this is Obituary's eleventh studio album and their first since 2017. And it is uh most definitely almost exactly what I expected it to be. Uh it's heavy, <laughs> at times a little doomy, with like a splash of hardcore elements, just to give it that sure. signature obituary razzle dazzle here. Uh, look, man, there's not much more to say about this album that hasn't been said about their previous ones. It opens with Barely Alive, and the tone is, like, immediately set within the first five seconds. Blast beats, double bass, strained vocals. There's a fucking guitar solo not even a minute into this album, man. Uh, these guys are <laughs> legends in the scene for a reason. Uh, they really pushed like this old school death metal sound forward in the late eighties. Uh, if you or anybody listening has not read it yet, I highly recommend, uh, the book choosing death, uh, as it covers obituaries early years and just like how influential they were. I don't personally think that they've continued to be as influential as they once were. However, I think that they've still got it as evidenced with, uh, this record. And I think they'll continue to chug along and co-headline tours as they deserve to until they no longer want to do those things. Uh, It's somewhere between a six and a seven for me. I really liked it. Uh, My standout is War, uh, mainly because uh, there's like this moment where like an acoustic guitar comes in to like play the riff. And I I remember thinking like, oh, is this the outro? And then nope, they crush you again. And I was like, classic, (laughs) classic. What'd you think about this obituary album, my man? That was okay. Uh, I usually like my heavy music to be primitive and raw, but this album put that to the test, man. <laughs> uh, I, I thought the first two tracks were great. They come out of the gate hot with a lot of blast beats, <laughs> a lot of thrash heavy riffs. But my personal interest in this album faded away as it went on, uh, with the occasional exception, of course. This one I have kind of in the four to five range. Like you said, it's it's an obituary album, so you'll enjoy it as much as you enjoy obituary. Barely Alive is my standout. I thought that one was fucking awesome. And I think maybe that's why like it affected the rest of the album, because it started with what was easily the best song to me, so it never got as good as feeling what, what I felt when listening to that. Yeah, but I it's mean, a it, decent album. It started on a high point. Are you uh, – I I mean, it's – I I, I, I uh, once every two years or so, I'll go back to Slowly We Rot, which is, I think, their 1989 album. And I remember, I, I like, every time I do, I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, this is this is good. <laughs> and there's, like, almost nothing in their discography that's going to make me feel like that album did the first time I ever heard it. I remember sitting in, sitting in my, sitting at the family computer because nobody had laptops <laughs> at the time and downloading from, what, 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 fuck, what was it called? Sky Searcher? Soul Seeker. Soul Seeker. And <laughs> it was a peer-to-peer uh, download, down, music download downloading thing and i remember downloading slowly we rot and putting it in my headphones for the first time and being like oh shit and uh yeah i don't think ever anything's ever going to make me feel like that again even from obituary but i did like it so that's what these bands do man they make us fans with like one piece of art or you know a few few pieces and then we're just chasing that dragon for the rest of their discography <laughs> yeah man i really do like the album art on this one though i think it's pretty, oh great album art neat. yeah we should do an album art of the year category at the end of Ooh, this year i like that 
Yeah, keep that in mind as we go. Will do. Um, all right, let's cap this week's albums off with this new one from Alpha 9 called New Horizons. Tell me about this one. You threw it on kind of by surprise. Yeah, uh, I did. I don't I don't really know if you're familiar with Artie. Uh, I know Artie. This is yeah. his other moniker. Uh, I thought it was cool, and it is. Uh, there's not much really to review here besides the fact that it is indeed trans music. It's new, and it is, is indeed it? No. pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. I gave it a six. My standout is Letter to a Beloved One. I previewed it before I threw it on, and I was like, you know what? We haven't we haven't listened to a trance album in a long time. Let's 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 let's, uh, let's throw some razzle dazzle. Not a pure trance one like this, exactly. Especially. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this. I mean, I, I say pure trance. It is a little more trance house than pure trance, but there's that. I think I'm getting the house because there's just an edge to it that he has. Mm-hmm. Um, if this album would have come out 13 years ago, this would have been maybe my favorite album. Yeah, <laughs> it, it shares a lot of the same DNA that some of like the best trance albums of that time had. You know, it gave me real Paul Van Dyke crush vibes. Totally. Yes. Excellent album. God damn. Uh, it, it runs a little long, but I think his creativity keeps it from getting stale. I also gave this one a six. My standout was Calling. Oh, I like that song. Yeah, that one. And I think Down to Love was probably my second standout. But there's a lot of good ones on here. I appreciate it. I'm definitely going to be revisiting this one a little later in the year to see how it's aged against other releases once we have more to compare it to. Nice. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. I, yeah, I thought it I thought it was interesting that an album released. And I, honestly, I knew after previewing the the first few songs, I was like, we're not going to have much to say about this, so it'll be fun to just listen to. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, man. No. Well, that does it for us this week. On next week's episode, we are going to be breaking down new albums from Coda the Friend, DJ Hansel, Newfound Glory, and We Are Scientists plus a ton of fucking singles. Uh, And before we wrap up, to recap, your song of the week was Black Unicorn by Boris Brekka. (laughs) Mine was Through the Week by Kamiya. Check those ones out if you guys did not listen to the playlist before listening to this podcast this week. Um, Next week sounds like it'll be very interesting. If you're following along on YouTube, please like the video. If you're listening on Spotify, give us a review. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Peace.